Hello everyone, I'm Julia from Geroctopus and today we will be talking about segments and data sets, principles and practice. Why do we need segments? Uh, how to build them? How it will make your life easier and your technical SEO analysis of the websites much more effective? We will be talking today about that and we will give you a lot of use cases there. So let's get started. Agenda for today. What is segmentation and why do we need that? How to build different segments while analyzing your website? Simple and more complex data set joining. And we will present a lot of use cases with the help of Jet Octopus. So what is segmentation? It's when you divide something big into small logical parts by applying different attributes. Let's say we can segment birds by sizes, by colors, by bird family. Uh, and within the website analysis, what is segmentation? It is when you slice your website into logic parts and analyze them separately. So let's get closer. Simple segmentation in any e-commerce. There can be product pages, the URLs which contain product, pagination pages segment, URLs which contain page, or segment with pages with comments, URL which contain comments. And there can be more complex segments, like product pages with duplicated titles. And you see that here URL contains product and title duplication is more than one. Or thin pages, number of words on the page are less than 100. Poor linked pages, in links are less than 10 or trash after generated shopping cart pages. The title contains shopping cart. So if we speak about complex segmentation, we should go to data set uh, because all of these complex segments are taken from different uh, data sets. So all of these attributes are taken from different data sets. And uh, now we'll be talking about like three major data sets uh, which are crawling, crawled pages, logs pages, and Google Search Console pages. All of these data sets are in Jet Octopus. And uh, uh, what is all about? All of these data sets, they have their own um, lines, their own attributes of, of the URL. Let's say crawled pages, it's all about URL, title, meta description, H1, links on the page, in links, uh, logs pages have data about URL again, number of bots visits, average loading time, size of a page, status code, uh, Google Search Console information. It's all about, again, URL, queries, impressions, clicks, CTRs, and positions. And uh, we can add more data sets. We can add uh, Google Search we can add Google Analytics SEO visits. We can add Google Analytics PPC visits, Ahrefs backlinks. We can add keywords from SEMrush. We can add your conversions. And the more data sets we have, uh, the more different insights we can get out of this uh, overlapping of the data. And we will show you then how to make that. So what we can do with them. We can make data selections or we can join data sets. And uh, when we are joining, we see that all these three data sets have common attribute. It is URL. And so we can join the data and get much more information on a separate URL. So when we are joining all of these data, we can get like such possible outcomes of this overlapping and joining. Uh, so we can get the pages with less than 10 internal links and small number of bots visits. Or we can get the pages with small number of impressions and clicks and with not so many bots visits. We can get the pages which don't receive bots visits at all. The pages with low content and small number of bots visits. And all of these information uh, is available right now because we've joined these data sets and they have this common 
attribute which is URL. So we enrich our information by this URL, getting uh, additional information from additional data sets. So there are two main joins, and in and not in. What that means? Let's go for the, with the examples. So the pages which are inside structure and are visited by search bots. It is the pages which are in crawled pages and in pages and logs. On the right hand, we have the pages which are cr in crawled pages, but not in pages and logs. And these are the pages which are in the site structure, but are not visited by search bots. So we are getting absolutely opposite results of this joining. And this is interesting. More complex join. Pages are in crawl pages. They are in logs, but not in Google Search Console. What that means? Uh, we selected the pages which are inside structure, which are getting bots visits, but they're not getting any actions in Google Search Console. They're not getting any impressions and clicks. Another example. Select the pages from logs, uh, which are present in Google Search Console, but these pages are not inside structure. So these pages are in logs, they are in Google Search Console, but they are not in crawled pages. And uh, you should look closer at these pages because these are orphaned pages. A crawl budget is spending there, and uh, these pages are getting traffic, but they are not inside structure. And you should realize if these pages are valuable and you should take back them into the site structure or maybe close them if they are like legacy pages or trash pages and you just should close them from indexation from bots. So let's look how it looks in Jet Octopus and how you can do it here. So uh, these are our first filter, it's uh, logs. Uh, we pick up uh, the data from logs uh, with uh, status codes 200. So we select just normal pages which, which are open for bots. Then uh, we pick up the pages which are not in crawl pages. And in uh, Google Search Console uh, for the last three months. And you are getting the pages from logs, which are getting bots visits, uh, then uh, which are not in the site structure, but they are ranked in SERP and they are getting impressions for the last period, for the last three months. And here we see around uh, 2,000 and a bit more pages, which you, which you should look closer because these pages uh, are getting traffic. And these pages are getting bots visits, but they are not in the site structure. And uh, you should look with the eyes at this list of URLs and uh, make the decision. Either you take them back in the, into the site structure or you just close that. And back to the segments, why it is so essential and so helpful for you to work with segments? Because at this particular data set joining, we've got like 2,000 URLs. Uh, when we make another data set joining, we can get to 100,000 URLs. And it is pretty hard and it takes time to work with such bulk of data and to get the insights from there. Uh, but when you have the segments, uh, you can watch all, all of this data by segments. You can analyze your indexability status uh, in your product segment. How well it is visited by search bots or what is the loading time in your most effective and most business oriented segment which is let's say product segment uh, or is it effective in SERP does it take uh, enough impressions clicks etc and you can watch all of this data again by each of your separate segment and make the concrete decisions within the segments so more examples with the possible segments like orphan logs, pages in logs, but not in crawl. The pages which are visited by bots, but they are not in the site structure. So just make decision either take them back or just close from bots. Orphan maximum, we'll call them. 
pages in logs, but not in any other data sets, not in Google Search Console, not in Google Analytics, not in backlinks, and not in crawl. So the pages which are not in site structure, but they are not anywhere, not effective in terms of SEO. So look closer at these pages because probably your crawl budget is wasted here and you should close them. So the core pages in logs and in Google Search Console, in Google Analytics, and but not in crawl. Orphan pages which are getting a lot of traffic and again, you should learn them uh, really deeply and make the decision and maybe take them back into the site structure. Low interlinking uh, segment, the pages with less than 10 internal links which are not crawled by search board or not work in sitemap, the pages which are only in sitemap but not crawled by search bots. More examples, non-canonical segment, so crawl a uh, page is non-canonical, but it is in logs. So probably your crawl budget is wasted here also because uh, bots are visiting your non-canonical pages. Broken pages. So in crawl, it is status code 200, but in logs, status code is blinking. Sometimes 200 and sometimes another status code. And uh, it is a problem, so your developers should fix, should fix that for sure. Not in stock products. Uh, product is not in stock, but it is in logs. So the bots are visiting these pages and you should like build up some strategy how you manage not in stock pages. Pagination, so pages in logs and in Google Search Console and the page number is more than 20. Uh, Non-crowd pagination, so page number is more than 20, but they're not in logs. So they are not visited by bots. That's all that I wanted to share with you today. And just a quick recap, why segmentation is important, uh, especially when you are working with a big website. It is a very effective helper for you because you are able to cut your site into small logic parts and to analyze them separately. Uh, you are able to join different data sets and to watch the result of this joining within your separate segment. Uh, also, you're able to understand what is really growing and what is decreasing in your website, in your particular segment, what to change and how to prioritize your uh, workflow. Uh, it is also very effective to use segments while uh, experiments because you have the test group, you have the experiment group and you are able to uh, compare the results of it and uh, it is actually much more easier and suitable to, works, uh, to work with segments uh, as you are able to understand what is working more effectively at your website and uh, where you have the like poor situation with your, let's say, internal links or let's say uh, with uh, crawl budget uh, because you are able to watch the data within the segment, to watch the uh, SERP efficiency within this particular segment, to watch the crawling data or to watch the bot's behavior in, in this particular segment. So we will be happy to get any comments or questions from you and we want you to learn uh, this tool as quick as possible because it will make your job much easier and much more effective. Thanks for your attention and have a great day.